Welcome to the 2020 PyTorch Summer Hack. My name is Brad Heinz, and I'm a partner engineer working with the PyTorch team. If you're not sure what a partner engineer is, it means my day job is making sure developers of all sorts are getting the most out of PyTorch and related tools. Today, I'd like to talk to you about some tools and techniques that can accelerate your progress in a time-constrained event like a hackathon. Some of the content will be suitable for people new to machine learning, but even deep learning experts might learn things about what's available for them in the PyTorch ecosystem. Now, for most machine learning projects, you're going to need a data set to train your model. But the process of gathering, validating, cleaning, regularizing, and labeling your data is sometimes the longest part of a machine learning project. If you don't have a data set ready to go, I'd like to offer you a few alternatives to creating your own. First, you should know about the domain APIs in PyTorch, Torch Vision, Torch Text, and Torch Audio. These are libraries specialized to the domains of computer vision, natural language, and sound and speech, respectively, and they give you access to an array of open datasets labeled for a variety of tasks, many of which can be auto-downloaded and cached from your code. You can install these libraries easily with pip and anaconda. OpenML.org keeps a running list of active datasets covering a huge range of use cases. Amazon Web Services keeps a registry of over 100 open datasets from sources like NASA, the National Institute for Health, Facebook's Data for Good initiative, and more. Kaggle runs online machine learning competitions, and they provide datasets for the competitions, and they have thousands of datasets under open licensing terms. As a final note, most of these data sources have permissive licensing, but it's your responsibility to make sure that you're complying with license terms and citation requirements. Of course, any deep learning project needs a model. You might want to design and build your own deep neural network for your app, and I won't tell you not to. Consider using one of the many open model architectures available to you. Many are even available pre-trained. In addition to open datasets, TorchVision gives you access to an array of model architectures, both untrained and pre-trained, for a variety of tasks. See the PyTorch documentation for details of the datasets and tasks they were trained against. The PyTorch Hub is a research resource for sharing models devoted to advanced applications like speech generation, medical imaging, and NLP transformers. You can check out these models at pytorch.org hub. ModelZoo at ModelZoo.co also gives access to an array of community-generated models for common and advanced use cases, many of them pre-trained. As with datasets, it's your responsibility to make sure that you comply with the licensing and citation terms of any model you use. Now, it's entirely possible that none of the pre-trained models available exactly match your use case. What do you do then? There's a technique called transfer learning that allows you to leverage a pre-trained model but customize it for your problem domain. As an example, you might use an existing computer vision model trained on a wide data set as a generic feature extractor and add and train your own output layers to that network to perform classification or other tasks specific to your application. The fact that you only have to train your custom layers greatly reduces the time and volume of training data needed there are tutorials on transfer learning and network fine-tuning available at pytorch.org tutorials. So now you've got your data set and you've trained your model, but a trained model rarely stands alone. You'll probably be integrating your model into a larger application. You'll need some way to pass in new inputs and to collect the model's predictions for use in your system. This is called model serving and for some applications can involve writing a lot of boilerplate and glue code to wrap your model and expose your API. If you'd like to access or allow others to access your model via a web API, take a close look at TorchServe. The PyTorch team recently released TorchServe to give people a fast and scalable way to access their models over HTTP. Out of the box, TorchServe can serve models for image classification and segmentation, object detection, and text classification. You can also build your own custom model handlers for other tasks and data types, and there are examples of both ready-made and custom model handlers available at github.com slash pytorch slash serve. 
In addition, we'll be putting up another video specifically about standing up TorchServe for the first time. You should be able to find it wherever you found this video. Let's quickly recap what we've seen. We have Torch Vision, Torch Text, and Torch Audio, PyTorch's domain APIs that give you access to tooling for vision, natural language, and audio applications. TorchServe is the new model serving solution for PyTorch that lets you easily wrap your model in a web API. If you want to leverage pre-trained models for a new task, check out the transfer learning tutorials at pytorch.org. There are data sets everywhere at places like openml.org, Amazon Web Services Open Data Registry, Kaggle, and the PyTorch domain APIs. And finally, Torch Vision, the PyTorch Hub, and ModelZoo all offer a variety of open model architectures that might be of use to you. Thanks for participating in the hackathon and for watching this video. We hope you learned something new and we cannot wait to see what you build.